Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are joining us from. Um, I'm Annette Richmond. This is the Smarter Career and Business Moves LinkedIn Live and Podcast. And I'm so excited to have Laura with me. Um, we've chatted before. Uh, and, you know, this is such a hot topic because video, as we know, is kind of here to stay, but so many people are uncomfortable with it. So, Laura, um, why don't you tell people who don't know you a little bit about who you are and what you do? Thank you, Annette. Absolutely. Hi, I'm Laura Doman, and I actually come from the business world, but I'm living now in the entertainment world. So I kind of bridge the two, and I find that video goes right in the middle. So what I do right now is I am an actress. I'm pursuing my dream on camera principally, but also with voiceover. I can't hear you right now, Annette. Yes, I'm sorry about that. Okay. I was having a little trouble finding my unmute button. I tend mm -hmm. to off unmute my mic because um, I have loud, loud dogs here. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, um, so let, let's jump right into it because I know that we have a lot of people that are um, joining us today uh, interested um, in this topic. And, um, you know, I have heard, and I'm sure you've heard, that when it comes to even public speaking, people would rather be in the casket than given the eulogy. And people are very nervous about presenting in person. Um, and I somehow I think that extends even worse to video. People are so nervous about it. Um, and, you know, it's they're so concerned about, you know, how do I look and what do people think? And so I'd like to um, actually have you start by, you know, just giving mm -hmm. people a, a few tips of how to kind of get over that fear and why they should not, you know, be afraid of it. Okay. Well, let's start with a few things. Why do people have such a hard time with public speaking and especially talking to video? There's a major fear, partly because you're not comfortable with it. Maybe you just don't like being center stage. Often you're afraid of being judged and you're so worried about yourself, how you look, how you sound, what you're going to say, any mistakes you might make so that you get all wrapped up in these worries rather than speaking to the message. And the truth of the matter is most people don't really care. They just want to hear what you have to say and they embrace the human foibles. So mm -hmm. understanding that mindset is the first thing. But you know what? We often have to follow our physicality. So some of the best stuff that you can do is just to get your body ready. What does that entail? Well, first of all, just relax it, which is easier said than done. But here are a few basic things you can try. First of all, working from the head on down, you can just move your head in slow circles just to get it moving. You can go from side to side. You can work the facial muscles. Eyebrows up and surprise and down. Big smile and a big frown. You can even get that tongue moving. There are tongue twisters. There's even little things. You have dogs, you'll appreciate this. Panting like a dog. <laughs> Honestly, it gets things moving in there. You can just open up really wide and close down. Moving down the body, shoulder raises and drops. Big breaths in. Breathe in slowly for four. Hold for four and exhale for four to eight counts. Now, if you have a little bit more time in the, ahead of this and you can exercise, do it. You know, maybe about an hour before it'll get the blood moving. But if not, just do some knee bends, do some twists, whatever it takes to get your body ready. And the biggest thing I can tell you is to hydrate with water. Stay away from the caffeine until <laughs> you're done because water will get everything moving. Caffeine will just dry you out. Be careful what you eat beforehand. If it's anything sticky and is going to be showing on your teeth or just make it harder to talk, wait again for afterwards. Yeah, it's interesting because it sounds like all that warm up, it's, it's like reminiscent of me watching Fame, you know, the movie <laughs> Fame with all the, yes. the, the teenagers in acting in acting high school um, in that school for uh, performing arts, I guess it's supposed to be and, um, and doing that. But I do have a question for you, and I'm sure yeah. you're um, familiar with this. Um, the, the whole power pose thing that Amy Cuddy kind of brought along where, you know, if you're feeling nervous and just not feeling confident that if you stand in one of those power poses, like the Superman pose or something that it will, 
will, you know, it, it kind of, you know, you, you feel it through your body. What, what's your take on that? Well, I think that's great to get into the mood, but you don't want to sound artificial when you're talking either. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The idea of the presenter, you know, the, the perfect persona out there is gone, gone by the wayside. I mean, even if you watch or listen to commercials, you're seeing real people, conversational, authentic. So you don't want to come across stiff. Now, if it gets you into your body and you feel confident, that's great. But I would suggest getting comfortable. It might just be a, sitting in a comfortable chair. I like to use a backless stool because I can sit, but I, I can't slouch or I'm going to fall off. The last thing you want to do is be slouching like that. <laughs> and you don't want to be pitching forward because then it just seems like you're just into their face. You do need to keep in mind that you're dealing with a frame. You know, the camera frame is only so big. So people are only going to see a little bit of you. And what they see is magnified. So you want to keep things small. But in terms of getting comfortable, it's really, a, really whatever makes it easy for you. And if you're really nervous, you might just want to get a fidget toy. Something just to hold in your hand below frame where if you just need to express that, oh my gosh, I'm so nervous, am I gonna do something stupid? You could squeeze that and the rest of you looks calm. Well, you know, I have never heard that before. And so I, mm -hmm. I love that, I love that. And I'm gonna share it um, and oh, you know, of course do. credit you with, tell me about that. <laughs> but it's like one of those, maybe one of those stress balls or something yes. like that to do. What a, what a fabulous idea, uh, you know, and, one of the best things I ever heard, because, you know, I'm always like to learn and, and I've gone to presentations and listen to people like you talk about how to be comfortable speaking. And and one of the best things that really got me over was the idea that, as you said initially, people don't care what you look like. They're not looking at you. What they want is they're listening to us right now. They're saying, oh, Laura. What does she have to say that is going to help me? That's what they're thinking. They're, you know, we're all thinking about that kind of what's in it for me when I'm going someplace. I'm not, you know, I'm not looking at people to see how they look. Nobody else is either. Although, um, you know, I, I know, look, I would like to be, you know, thinner and, you know, younger and, and all of that. But, um, but I am who I am. So how, how can people just kind of, get over themselves. I mean, for me, it was doing videos over and over and over again. Um, but what are your suggestions? Well, I would just do practice makes perfect. You know, we all have a distorted version of how we look and we're always super critical. But the more you see yourself, the more you'll see that there's a real person. And even if you're just talking to a camera and recording, let's say on your phone, I mean, this is a great practice device. You'll just get used to it. And you'll find that when you're not trying so hard, you're the most effective and your personality comes through and your humor. Mm -hmm. And it's just something you got to get over mentally. None of us is going to get any younger, but you know <laughs> what? There is a mindset that as you get older, you honestly don't care quite as much what other people think. I mean, we do, but we're not hung up on it. Yeah. I, I mean, I remember talking to some young actresses that were approaching 30 and they were freaking out. And I said, look, I'm talking to you from much farther down the road. Honestly, you're going to find your 30s are one of your best decades till you get to your 40s and your 50s and beyond. There's always something. And you become more authentic. And it's the lines on your face. It's the experience coming through. Even the fact that I got a little bit of a tinge of laryngitis still with me, so it's not perfect voice. It's real. Who cares? See, the voice just cracked. Who hasn't had a voice crack? The big thing is if there is a mistake that you make and you're not looking perfect, just keep going. Most people won't even notice or they'll kind of shrug and say, I like her. <laughs> I, I do the same thing. Oh, absolutely. People, people get so nervous about um, doing presentations. If they're, mm -hmm. you know, on video, doing a webinar, or if they're, you know, doing it in person and they're so concerned, they're worried about, oh, what if I forget this? What if I forgot? Nobody knows. Nobody knows whether you forgot something no. or not. And and I just, you know, I love the idea of the relaxation that you've talked about because um, I, I have 
obviously, you know, we share many friends in, in common, like Jillian, who, you know, does videos all the time and, and people that are very comfortable on video. They just don't even think about it. Although when I watch myself on a video, I hate to, my oh, voice. Yeah. yeah. Well. But anyway, um, but it's, it's just, um, having one of the problems that people have is kind of where to look at the camera because, you know, we want to, um, as you know, if you're on video or if you're shooting a video on your iPhone for practice or Android, whatever the smartphone, you need to not be looking where you think you should. So can you talk a little bit about that for people? Oh, yeah. And I'm going to wrap in a few other tips here at the same time. Awesome. More right. the better. <laughs> the whole point of being on video or on voiceover, if you're going to narrate something that's being shown is to give the viewer, the audience, the listener, the feeling that you are talking right at only to them. So what you want to do is talk as if you're talking to one person, somebody who likes you and somebody who really is enthusiastically supporting what you have to say, a friend. So keep in mind one person. And when you talk to them, if you're going to be talking directly to the camera, just imagine that they are there. You're not looking at a little green light or a red light. If it helps, put their picture right next to that little light or right behind it and imagine that you're speaking to them. So if you're going to be presenting something, you don't want to just be staring at the camera. It's okay to look away. That's human. That's natural. That's what we want to see. But remember the viewers on the other side and imagining that there's one friend that's there is all that you need. Now, if you are going to be speaking and moving around, keep in mind there is a frame. In fact, you know, like I've only got maybe this much space, this high, and all so forth. I can move. But remember, small gets magnified. So a little move can look like a lot. And you don't want to show anybody your profile. So you want to make sure you don't talk over here if you're trying to explain something. You want to make sure that the microphone catches it and the camera can see most of your face, at least three quarters. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you do what they say in the acting world called cheating, which means you're supposed to be talking to something and it's not really there, but you don't want your face down and you don't want to be looking up. Nobody wants to see your nostrils, believe me, <laughs> but you can cheat. And just imagine it's like maybe 15, 20 degrees off center either way. And that looks like a big movement on camera. I'm pretty sure. And if it makes it a little more comfortable for you not to be looking directly at that light. And if you're a videographer or in replay, it looks okay. So turn your head slightly, look over there and, it'll still give the big impression that you're talking to somebody. But ideally, it is try to looking right into that camera lens. Now, sometimes you're trying to figure out how do I keep track of what I'm doing? That's also where you can keep a little cheat sheet just to keep you on track because you want to sound like you're talking naturally. Now, sometimes if you have a lot of script, you might even use a teleprompter. And the nice thing about it is the words play directly over the camera. So you're always looking at camera. Mm-hmm. The trick there is to practice so it doesn't look like you're reading or you're just moving your hand and your eyes are following. Yeah, I see people doing that. <laughs> it's, it's a quick tell. I've done a lot of projects where, like corporate industrials, where you use a teleprompter and you just have to learn how to position it far enough away with the type big enough at the right pace and then get used to it. And your eye catches in the peripheral uh, vision there. So but that's something most people might need to deal with. But if you're really nervous and scared, having the words or something just to keep you on track nearby might help you. And you know what? You can also even do cheats. And let me show you some of those. Let's say you're talking about something and you might actually be saying, you know what? I was referencing this and you actually have your points here. You're not reading them, but you can use it as a natural prop and it mm -hmm. makes your, mm -hmm. your video more entertaining. Because people don't just want to see a talking head. I mean, yeah, I, yeah, no, it, no, yeah. It, it it is so true, and you know, it people um in in my experience, I'm hearing from people, and and as a consumer myself, people like a more casual conversation. Yeah. Um, but but I do hear you on that, you know, and I have my big big notes here that I can just <laughs> glance down and right. see the information. Um. But, you know, one of the things that that I I would like you to um, mm -hmm. talk a little bit about, and um, I see this with people, people that I know, people who I have seen give webinars and stand on stages and speak. 
who are quite engaging. And when they um, are doing a video, like a profile video or a training video or something like that, they look like they're in a hostage video, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure you see them too. And it, yes. and it, I always, um, I always, I wish I knew something to tell them to help them make that shift because nobody wants to hear somebody watch a video where they're talking yeah. like this. And it just, and it, it, it really, um, I feel badly for them because they're such good communicators. Yep. Well, there are a few things I might offer. First of all, some of those people might have done it five, 10, 15, 50 times. <laughs> now, this is where the acting tricks come in. If you do something more than three times, it's probably going to get a little stale. You know what you're saying. You're so worried about hitting this particular word or that syllable and looking just perfect. Perfection is boring. People want to see the real you. So don't do it so many times. Before you do it, you might even want to watch something funny, whether it's like a little meme or a little video, just to get you in a happy, good mood. People want to see natural smiles. And you might even have somebody there who you're having a conversation with, which is called a lead-in. So let's say that and I'm going to be doing a video introduction, 15, 20 seconds, whatever it might be for LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And Annette, my friend, is over there, and we're just kind of talking, and you're just talking to me like you are right now. So Laura, you know, hey, you've done some interesting things. How'd you get into this? Tell me about yourself. Oh, well, that's great, Annette. You have a lead in and then you cut with your video. Yeah, I used to be a business. I used to be an IT and a sales exec. And now I'm doing this. And then it comes across more natural. So even if you don't have somebody there, do a lead in. You keep the camera running. But the nice thing about video is, listen up, you can edit. <laughs> you can get rid of the stuff before and the stuff after. Yeah. Is that, that, no, that is that is true. You know, I've been doing this for a long time and I've had my podcast. I've been doing this LinkedIn Lives about two years now and I've had my podcast for like three. And I get contacted all the time by people saying, oh, you know, my so whoever's be on your on your podcast. And when I tell them that, well, it's a live show that feeds into my podcast, I never hear from them again. People are so nervous. I'm not sure what they're nervous about um, to uh, to be on, on camera like that. So um, I would like to, to turn, um, because the time goes by so fast, and ask you a little bit about what should people wear when they're on video. I sometimes see people with large jewelry and and things uh, or large prints and I mean what what kind of works and and what doesn't and, and if you could tell us kind of why. Oh of course. You want to wear something that is not going to take the viewers attention away from you and your message. So unless you're selling a lot of jewelry and you want to wear it all at once <laughs> or you are selling flannel shirts probably not the best idea. I would suggest instead a color and a solid that complement you. So especially considering your background. I'm in my voiceover studio right now. It's a lot of black because I've got all these sound blankets around me. But red pops out and it doesn't overwhelm. And it's a simple neckline. It's flattering and it doesn't detract. So you want to wear something that's also appropriate for whatever you're doing. If you're doing a business video, the days of the jacket and tie are probably passe, but mm -hmm. a nice, solid, open-collared shirt if you're a guy, or a nice, solid blouse, or even a layering effect for women works well, like a simple jacket, let's say solid, and a shirt underneath. Mm -hmm. Stay away from wearing anything that is all white or all black. You might go with something that will be a little more of a softer pastel or a primary color. Stay away from anything that sparkles. I mean, keep the rhinestones for Saturday night. <laughs> Seriously, it will wreak havoc with your lights. And again, people are going to wonder what the heck's going on. Don't overdo the jewelry. And especially if you're going to be a hand talker, and I could talk more about that, don't wear a lot of bracelets. They'll jangle and they'll distract. Keep it simple. The attention on you. And if it's professional, you don't need a whole lot to go with. Simple, natural makeup, simple, natural jewelry like you normally would wear every day. But if it seems too much to you, it probably is. 
I'm like, somebody <laughs> had to take off that one piece. So yeah, yeah, I've I've heard that. I've heard that. And it it's it's so true because I tend to talk a little bit with my hand. I try not to be too crazy about it, but I learned the hard way. I have a um a gold bracelet that I love and I wear often. And if every time I, if I put my hand down on the desk, you would hear it clinking and clanging and, oh, yeah. and people they just don't think about that now i feel bad because i wear black all the time <laughs> whenever i host my live shows i wear black i wear pretty much similar something similar all the time because i want them to be evergreen and that's mm -hmm. that's part of the reason for it you know so it's not like spring or summer or winter or whatever um, but now you know you're telling me oh i shouldn't be doing that so i don't know about that well not the general rule, but you also have a very bright, light background. And so it works. And you have lighter hair. If yes. I were now, if I were going to be wearing, let's say, black, you'd probably see a floating head because of the background in my dark right, hair. Right, right. But right. typically, black might be fine. It's also overdone. You usually do get a little farther with some color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if you're going to be wanting more than one color, solids and just a little bit, like a main color and then a little bit of an accent. Okay. So what about, what about the, the background? And I know you're in your, you're in your studio, your voiceover studio. Yeah. And I, um, what I used virtual backgrounds for a very long time. Um, and I bought, you know, expensive green screens so that they would, you know, not pixelate and all of that. And then I was um, talking to a friend who is a, a professional speaker who, who told me that, well, you know, it, it, people don't really care for, the, they would rather see a real background. And so, you know, um, what what do you recommend for something like that? I mean, I have my office here, um, but for people who maybe don't even have a, a situation like I have or you have, um, okay. if they're going to be on a, a video, like a, if they're being interviewed, they're a business owner, or if they're doing like a job interview. Okay. I can offer several different things, and it depends okay. on the type of video and how long it would be. Because I do use those solid backdrops if I'm making a very short video that might only be 15, 20 seconds. Mm -hmm. And you want something, again, that doesn't compete. Most people would like to see something in the background as long as it doesn't overwhelm your message. You don't want people walking in behind you. You don't want too many <laughs> things. If it represents the kind of work you do and your natural environment, that's great. You can even set up a corner of a spare bedroom. And that's, by the way, where I have my self-taping studio right now for whenever I do auditions that are on camera. Mm -hmm. And what you could do is just something very soft. You might have a potted plant. You might have just a desk or maybe a table. It, it, and if you're really hard up, you don't have to deal with any of that. You can stand in front of a soft curtain. Although if you can oh. bring a few other elements, that's fine. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily want to have just like white behind you. Although if you've got darker hair and you're wearing a bright colored top, you could probably get away with that. The more important thing is to make sure that your lighting and your sound are there. Because, and I'll just throw some of that in. You want to make sure people can see you. And you want to make sure people can hear you. Watch out for any spaces that are going to have too much echoes. Like a big room with a lot of wood floors. Dampen it down with rugs, blankets, or find a quieter space. When it comes to lights, ring lights work pretty well. Be careful of overhead lights because it'll throw strange stuff over on top of your head. You can even use natural light, but don't have a window in back of you. Either face the window or ideally have it to one side or the other, and natural light works well. Mm -hmm. So you can even take this outside and again, use the sun carefully. You don't want the camera focusing in on the sun and you don't want to squint into it but if you're just on a comfortable couch talking that's fine again it depends what you're doing if you're doing a very casual thing you could be sitting on your couch in your living room as long as it's quiet if it's professional a nice corner an office or just a simple background will do well, I, you know, I, I love that and, and I appreciate it because people do worry so much. And I, I hear you. I have recessed lighting in my office, but I have something taped over the one that's right over my head. So that otherwise I look like a like an angel I yes. guess, or something like that. It would be very, very, um, you know, disconcerting. So we are getting near the end. And um, I want to ask you, of course, for final thoughts. But I also want to ask you because I know that you are um, in a recently published book with a, a compilation of authors 
and your um, topic in there, I assuming is on video. If you can talk a little yeah. bit about that and just show us the book, because I don't have a copy oh, yet. Oh, absolutely. No, this is a collaboration of 36 marketing specialists from around the world, 10 countries represented and 350 practical usable tips on everything you might want to know about marketing. It's a handbook. Pull it up when you need it. Anything from traditional marketing all the way to social media. And yes, I talk about YouTube and on how to make your camera on camera videos rock to the future, like metaverse and AI and Web3 and where is it all going? So it just came out. It is on paperback and Kindle and now on audiobook. So Amazon and Audible are where you'll find it. Uh, the other thing I would just mention for totally free, if anybody would like to know more about the things I've touched on, I've got a YouTube series. Just go to Laura Doman and you'll find it. It's on camera tips for busy execs. And there's a lot there. And, you know, you could just dive right on in. No, no, that that sounds that sounds great. Um, and, and I know that, you know, it is available on audio Um it's, is it audio or audible? Is it available? It's audible. audible. It's an audible. audio book on audible. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Tongue twister too. And then um, the paperback in Kindle through Amazon. Awesome. Yeah. I've seen it up there and I've, I've heard people talk about it. I just haven't been able to get a copy yet. So um, I do also want to ask um, before, before we say goodbye, because our time is almost over. Um, we've, you, we've talked about a lot. I've asked you, you know, a, a variety of, of things. Um, what, what would you like to share that, you know, we haven't discussed that you think is an important thing for people to know kind of on this, on this topic? The secret to acting, the secret to doing voiceover is to have fun. So when you're making your video, allow yourself to enjoy the process. Enjoy the idea of talking to an audience, to educate them, to teach them something new, to show them something, show them your real self, be yourself, warts and all, because... <laughs> People will remember the person, not necessarily your makeup job. Yes, that that's so true. And, and I'm so glad that you end with that because people are so concerned about, um, you know, how they look and what people are going to think about them. And it's really just um, it, it's just so something they should never think about because people don't care about you. They care about them. They're thinking about themselves. They're not thinking about you yeah. and what you have done. So um, I want to thank you so much for being here with me today. It's been such a treat to chat with you again. Um, and you know, you're welcome to connecting with people on LinkedIn. Oh, absolutely. Just get a hold of me on LinkedIn. I've got a website. You can contact me there. Very easy. LauraDoman.com. And of course, YouTube. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you so much. I so am grateful to have you here with me today. I learned some things and I'm sure people watching have learned as well. I've seen a lot of, um, you know, responses, uh, not necessarily comments, but responses from people who are enjoying your, oh. uh, appreciating your tips. So Wonderful. thanks so much um, for everyone else out there. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you.